The word of the Lord from Psalm 118. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please be seated and join with me in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day, this day that you have known about before time even began. The day that you would bring Reed and Margaret together in marriage, uniting them as one. And Father, starting a new family, a family, Lord, that by your grace, for your glory, will be used mightily in this world. Father, we praise you for those who are gathered here today. Praise you for family, praise you for friends, praise you for a beautiful creation that we can enjoy this moment in. So Lord, we lift up your name and we give you praise in Christ's name, amen. On behalf of Reed, Margaret and their families, I'd like to welcome you all to this wedding ceremony. The ceremony which you are all witnessing today is certainly a solemn occasion but it is also a glorious celebration where a man and a woman, both believers in Christ, enter into a lifelong covenant relationship with each other and their God. Weddings are glorious because they've been ordained by God since the beginning of time. In the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, we read, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Going on in verse 24, we read, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. When quoting this same passage in Ephesians, Paul tells us that it ultimately refers to Christ's covenantal relationship with his bride, the church. Therefore, what makes today such a glorious occasion is that it brings back to our memory Jesus' love and commitment to his bride. The bride of Christ is composed of those who confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and who believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead. The bride of Christ are those who repent of their sins and surrender all they have to the Lordship of Christ, trusting in Christ alone for the eternal salvation of their souls, believing him when in John 14, 6, he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And weddings are a celebration because they foreshadow the greatest celebration of all. When all of those who have given their lives to Christ by accepting his free gift of salvation will, as the bride of Christ, be united with him for all eternity. Revelation 19 verse 7 says, Let us rejoice and exalt and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. And in verse 9, we read, And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of God. Everyone here today has accepted the invitation that Reed and Margaret sent you for their wedding. And they are super pumped and excited that you're here. But a greater question is, Have you accepted the invitation to the marriage supper of the Lamb that Christ has sent you? And if you haven't, then let me encourage you, there's no better time than now to do so, and it would bring Reed and Margaret great joy to know that you have done so on this glorious day. Wedding ceremonies magnificently testify of God's love by reminding us of His commitment to His people in the past, by bringing us great joy in the present, and by giving us a strong hope for the future. As you all know, Reed and Margaret have both, professionally, have both personally professed Christ. They have accepted his wedding invitation and they've set forth to live for his glory by surrendering wholeheartedly to God's call upon their lives. So today we celebrate the work that Christ has done, the work that he is currently doing, and the work that he promises to carry out. And now read to the husband. God says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives. And Margaret, to the wife, God says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. 
For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. And to you both, the scriptures say, submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So in light of these directives and commandments of our God, read, do you take Margaret to be your wedded wife, promising to love, cherish, and protect her, forsaking all others, to keep yourself only unto her so long as you both shall live? And Margaret, in light of these directives and commandments of our Lord God, do you take Reed to be your wedded husband, promising to love, honor, and submit to him, forsaking all others, keeping yourself only unto him, so as long as you both shall live? I do. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I do. <laughs> Reed and Margaret, before I give you the pastoral charge, I want you to both know how blessed I have been to get to know you. It's been a joy to meet with you both in premarital counseling, a joy to hear both of your testimonies and your stories of how you came to faith, how your families played huge roles in that. And just to see the fruit of that in your life, read, to hear stories last night, even at the rehearsal dinner of the man of deep conviction that you are, that your waters flow deep and you like to have that level of conversation. And that shows that you have that abiding relationship because you can't go deep unless those roots are there to sustain that. And so I can tell that you're rooted in Christ and desire to be built up in Him. And Margaret, hearing testimonies of of you last night and the joy that you have brought so many of your friends and family, that gentle, quiet spirit, that confidence, again, that shows that you're trusting in the Lord and that you're resting in Him for your ultimate beauty. And just to see you guys coming together has been a great joy. And so thank you, thank you both for sharing your lives with me and my wife, Elizabeth. And thank you for giving me the honor of journeying alongside you both. And now I want to charge you both with this. As I, as I previously mentioned, marriage was created and established by God. It's not the state, not the culture, not the world around us, but by God Himself. God initiated marriage for His purposes. And when we enjoy marriage the way He designed it, God will be glorified and we will be satisfied. And whether or not you will enjoy marriage the way God designed it, will depend on how you daily answer one question. And it's a question that Jesus asked His disciples over 2,000 years ago. He was on His way to Caesarea Philippi, and He turned to them and He asked, Who do people say that I am? Now, at first they gave Him some common answers of the day, but then He asked them directly, But who do you say that I am? Your daily answer to this one question is the most crucial thing in all of life. And it's my prayer that your answer to this question would match the disciple Peter's answer when he said, you are the Christ. You see, Peter knew that he himself was a sinner who was lost and separated from God without hope in a fallen world. Yet he believed that Jesus was speaking the truth when he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peter knew that in Christ there was life and life abundantly. And to live apart from Him would lead to despair, discouragement, and ultimately destruction. So Peter gave himself to Christ, surrendering to Him as Lord, and walked with Him intimately all the days of his life. And that's my charge to you today, to walk intimately with Jesus all the days of your life. For by doing so, you will have the strength to follow through with the vows that you'll soon make to one another. And so in order to walk with Jesus intimately all the days of your life, four final quick points of premarital counsel as you go in to your marriage relationship. Point one is always remember Jesus Christ. In 2 Timothy 2.8, Paul told Timothy to remember Jesus Christ risen from the dead. And I charge you today to do the same. Remember Jesus Christ. Remember He's your hope, He's your joy, He's your strength, He's your deliverer, and in Him you are secure. Don't ever try to replace His role in your life with each other. For as great as the two of you are, 
neither of you will ever be able to replace Christ in each other's life. Therefore, always remember him. Point two is to consider Jesus Christ. In Philippians 2, 3 through 5, the Lord says, Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility consider others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. When Christ has his rightful place on the throne of your heart, you'll be empowered to live according to these words. You'll be able to serve one another with humility. You'll be able to look after the other's interest. You'll be able to consider the other more significant than yourself. In your own strength, this will be impossible. But remember, that what is impossible with man is possible with God. And you can do all things through Christ, who gives you strength as you abide in Him. And that's the third point. Always abide in Jesus Christ. John tells us in John 15, 5, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So continue to be rooted in Christ, so that you both will be built up in Him and bear much fruit for His glory. And then finally, I charge you to always celebrate Jesus Christ. When Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment was in Mark 12, He answered by saying, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And therefore, celebrate Christ every day of your lives from here on out. For here lies the secret to a successful marriage. Christ must increase, and the two of you must decrease. He must become greater, and the two of you must become less. And as you celebrate Christ above all things, and you give Him the rightful place on the throne of your heart, as you daily surrender to Him, He'll give you the grace needed to love and respect one another as He commands you to in Ephesians. So that is my charge to you, and I look forward to seeing how y'all walk that out in the many years to come. And now we'll take a moment to worship the Lord together through this song of praise. Jesus, I my cross have taken. Jesus, I my cross have taken. Oh, to leave and follow thee. Destitute Thou from hence my all shall be Perish every fond ambition Or sword or hope or no Yet a rich is my condition God and heaven are still Disaster, scorn, and pain. 
What you guys can't see back there are the, the tears coming down the groom's face and what a joyous, <laughs> some, think, some might think of sweat, but it's, uh, sweat's probably coming down his back, but there's tears coming down his face. A, a groom rejoicing in his bride. Guys, that is a beautiful story of Christ that rejoices in his bride and we look to that. So, as we do these vows, Reed and Margaret, I want to remind you that a lot of people think that it's a love that keeps the marriage together, and they usually think that love is understood as loving feelings. They think that will hold the marriage together. Actually, though love must be present, and it must be understood as something that we do, not something that we just have, but it's the couple's vows that hold the marriage together and Christ working in those vows. Marriage that depends on good feelings or loving feelings, they'll have a difficult time. Those feelings will come and go. But marriage, a marriage that consistently, consistently looks back to those vows and then trusts God's power to keep them, that marriage will find a continual source of strength and progress. The reciting of these vows will take moments the keeping of them a lifetime. But this is God's design, that you grow in grace together, fulfilling these before Him all the days of your life. So Mar Margaret and Reed, if you'll face one another, holding each other's hands and read, you repeat after me. In the name of God, In the name of God, I, Reed, take you, Margaret, I, Reed, take you, Margaret, to be my God-given wife, to be my God-given wife, to have and to hold, to have and to hold, from this day forward, from this day forward, for better or for worse, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish, as long as we both shall live, as long as we both shall live, according to God's holy word, according to God's holy word, and thereunto. Thereunto, I pledge thee my faith. I pledge thee my faith. Let all others choose this day. Let all others choose this day. Whom they will serve. Whom they will serve. But as for me and my house. But as for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. And now Margaret. In the name of God. In the name of God. I, Margaret, take you read. I, Margaret, take you read. To be my God-given husband. To have, and to, hold, to have and to hold from this day forward, from this day forward. For, better for, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, for richer or poorer. In, sickness and in, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to, and to, cherish. to honor and to submit to, to, honor and to, submit to. As, long as, as long as we both shall live, according to God's holy word, to God's holy word. and thereunto I pledge thee my faith. Do not entreat me to leave you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And your God shall be my God. This is my solemn vow. Margaret and Reed, in the Bible, covenants have symbols to remind those making the covenant of what they've promised. 
The wedding rings that you're about to exchange will be enduring symbols of the vows that you have each made today, and they will serve as a witness to all the world of your commitment in marriage. Read, repeat this, these words after me. Margaret, I give you this ring. Margaret, I give you this ring. In the presence of Almighty God. In the presence of Almighty God. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I do pledge to you my love. I do pledge to you my love. My devotion. My devotion. And my faithfulness. And my faithfulness. And I honor you. And I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Now, Margaret. Now, Margaret, repeat these words. <laughs> Read, I give you this ring. Read, I give you this ring. In the presence of Almighty God. As a symbol of my vow. And with all that I am. And all, that I have, and all that I have, I do pledge to you my love, my devotion, and my faithfulness. And I honor you in the name of the Father, and, the of, the Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Read and Margaret, with these emblems of purity and endless devotion, showing how lasting and imperishable is the love which is now mutually pledged, founded and growing upon the perfect love with which Christ has loved you both. You do each the other wed, and these, and these marriage vows you will forever seal. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for this day, and we pray your blessing upon Reed and Margaret. We pray, Lord, that your face would truly shine upon them in ways that are immeasurably more than what they could ever ask or imagine. We pray that they would remember you, that they would celebrate you, that they would be rooted and built up in you and abide in you and bear much fruit. And Father, that you would receive much glory as you strengthen them and give them the grace needed to carry out to that day of your return these vows that they've made. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Read and Margaret, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord make His face to shine upon you and your home and be gracious to you and your family. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Read and kiss your bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's a joy and a privilege to introduce for the first time Mr. and Miss Reed Ludwig Hodges. <laughs>
dismissed to the reception. Enjoy.